Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. This will be the second part of the development log video this week. So let's jump right in. The first thing I've been experimenting with is using the inverse kinematic system of the physics engine in combination with keyframe animations to create sort of semi-procedural animations but haven't really gotten far so I will be implementing this in the future. The next thing I've been working on is cancelable animations so I can specify which animations can be cancelled and which cannot. I also worked on interpolating uh, animation from standing pose to a keyframe so that the transition into animation action looks smooth. The next thing to do is to make all animation action transitions fluid. But with that out of the way, let's get into the main part of this video, decals. Since the engine is using a deferred renderer, I use a screen space technique to draw the decals. So as you can see I can place the decals on almost any flat surface. But I had to restrict it to axis aligned surfaces because the decals are using the underlying location for their texture coordinates. But with this technique you can render quite a bit of them without any major slowdowns. Another sensible restriction is that the decals only appear on static objects. Because splitting the decals and moving them with dynamic objects would be really hard to do. Not to mention slow. So I used a stencil buffer to basically specify the regions of the screen I want to draw on, avoiding any dynamic objects. Because the technique uses the same screen space data as other geometry, it's easy to make sure that lighting looks correct, since the decal rendering only changes screen space, color and normals. As you can see, this technique is perfect for rendering bullet holes. And with so many decals, it's also possible to draw on surfaces. But with such scenarios, it would probably make sense to have some sort of an upper limit to make sure that we don't draw decals such as bullet holes too many times. So as you can see from the video, I've been also working on animated decals. And I can also specify if the decal uses the underlying normal or its own. So with the animated decals it also makes sense to interpolate between the keyframes. So for demonstrating that I've made this counting animation. Since the decals also use the same screen space textures as the geometry, the bloom can easily be applied to the brighter areas of the decal. So as you could see from the arrows the left one was using keyframe interpolation and the right one wasn't. And in this example I actually think that the arrow without interpolation looked better, so I made the interpolation optional. So this brings us to the end of this video, if you liked the video like it, and if you enjoyed a more dynamic commentary as opposed to a more relaxing one tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching and if you would like to see more videos in the development log series please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time, bye!